An earthworm is a tube-shaped, segmented worm found in the phylum Annelida. They have a worldwide distribution and are commonly found living in soil, feeding on live and dead organic matter. An earthworm's digestive system runs through the length of its body. It conducts respiration through its skin. It has a double transport system composed of colomic fluid that moves within the fluid-filled coelom and a simple, closed blood circulatory system. It has a central and a peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of two ganglia above the mouth, one on either side, connected to a nerve cord running back along its length to motor neurons and sensory cells in each segment. Large numbers of chemoreceptors are concentrated near its mouth. Circumferential and longitudinal muscles on the periphery of each segment enable the worm to move. Similar sets of muscles line the gut, and their actions move the digesting food toward the worm's anus. Earthworms are hermaphrodites, each individual carries both male and female sex organs. As invertebrates, they lack either an internal skeleton or exoskeleton, but maintain their structure with fluid-filled coelom chambers that function as a hydrostatic skeleton. Earthworm is the common name for the largest members of Oligocata, which is either a class or a subclass depending on the author. In classical systems, they were placed in the order Epistopora, on the basis of the male pores opening posterior to the female pores, though the internal male segments are anterior to the female. Theoretical cladistic studies have placed them, instead, in the suborder Lumbricina of the order Haplotaxida, but this may again soon change. Folk names for the earthworm include, dew worm, rainworm, night crawler, and angleworm, due to its use as fishing bait. Larger terrestrial earthworms are also called megadryles, which translates to big worms as opposed to the microdryles small worms in the semi-aquatic families tubificity lumbricity and enchytraeidae among others the megadryles are characterized by having a distinct clitellum which is more extensive than that of microdryles and a vascular system with true capillaries topic anatomy Topic. Form and function Depending on the species, an adult earthworm can be from 10 mm in long and 1 mm in wide to 3 m long and over 25 mm in wide, but the typical Lumbricus terrestris grows to about 360 mm in long. Probably the longest worm on confirmed records is Amanthus mekongianus that extends up to 3 meters (10 feet) in the mud along the banks of the 4,350 kilometers (2,703 miles) Mekong River in Southeast Asia. From front to back, the basic shape of the earthworm is a cylindrical tube, divided into a series of segments called metamerisms that compartmentalize the body. Furrows are generally externally visible on the body demarking the segments. Dorsal pores and nephridiopores exude a fluid that moistens and protects the worm's surface, allowing it to breathe. Except for the mouth and anal segments, each segment carries bristle like hairs called lateral setae used to anchor parts of the body during movement. Species may have four pairs of setae on each segment or more than eight, sometimes forming a complete circle of setae per segment. Special ventral setae are used to anchor mating earthworms by their penetration into the bodies of their mates. Generally, within a species, the number of segments found is consistent across specimens, and individuals are born with the number of segments they will have throughout their lives. 
The first body segment, segment number one, features both the earthworm's mouth and, overhanging the mouth, a fleshy lobe called the prostomium, which seals the entrance when the worm is at rest, but is also used to feel and chemically sense the worm's surroundings. Some species of earthworm can even use the prehensile prostomium to grab and drag items such as grasses and leaves into their burrow. An adult earthworm develops a belt-like glandular swelling, called the clitellum, which covers several segments toward the front part of the animal. This is part of the reproductive system and produces egg capsules. The posterior is most commonly cylindrical like the rest of the body, but depending on the species, may also be quadrangular, octagonal, trapezoidal, or flattened. The last segment is called the paraproct. The earthworm's anus, a short vertical slit, is found on this segment. The exterior of an individual segment is a thin cuticle over skin, commonly pigmented red to brown, which has specialized cells that secrete mucus over the cuticle to keep the body moist and ease movement through soil. Under the skin is a layer of nerve tissue, and two layers of muscles a thin outer layer of circular muscle, and a much thicker inner layer of longitudinal muscle. Interior to the muscle layer is a fluid-filled chamber called a coelom that by its pressurization provides structure to the worm's boneless body. The segments are separated from each other by septa the plural of septum, which are perforated transverse walls, allowing the colomic fluid to pass between segments. A pair of structures called nephrostomes are located at the back of each septum. A nephric tubule leads from each nephrostome through the septum and into the following segment. This tubule then leads to the main body fluid filtering organ, the nephridium or metanephridium, which removes metabolic waste from the colomic fluid and expels it through pores called nephridiopores on the worm's sides. Usually two nephridia sometimes more are found in most segments. At the center of a worm is the digestive tract, which runs straight through from mouth to anus without coiling, and is flanked above and below by blood vessels, the dorsal blood vessel and the ventral blood vessel as well as a subneural blood vessel and the ventral nerve cord, and is surrounded in each segment by a pair of pallial blood vessels that connect the dorsal to the subneural blood vessels. Many earthworms can eject colomic fluid through pores in the back in response to stress. Australian Didymogaster sylvaticus, known as the blue squirter earthworm, can squirt fluid as high as 30 cm, 12 in. Topic: <laughs> Nervous system. The nervous system of an earthworm is segmented and comprises three parts, the central nervous system CNS, peripheral nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. Topic. Central nervous system The CNS consists of a bilobed brain, cerebral ganglia, or suprapharyngeal ganglion, subpharyngeal ganglia, circumpharyngeal connectives and a ventral nerve cord. Earthworm's brains consist of a pair of pear-shaped cerebral ganglia. These are located in the dorsal side of the alimentary canal in the third segment, in a groove between the buccal cavity and pharynx. A pair of circumpharyngeal connectives from the brain encircle the pharynx and then connect with a pair of subpharyngeal ganglia located below the pharynx in the fourth segment. This arrangement means the brain, subpharyngeal ganglia and the circumpharyngeal connectives form a nerve ring around the pharynx. The ventral nerve cord formed by nerve cells and nerve fibers begins at the subpharyngeal ganglia and extends below the alimentary canal to the most posterior body segment. The ventral nerve cord has a swelling, or ganglion, in each segment, i.e. a segmental ganglion, which occurs from the fifth to the last segment of the body. 
There are also three giant axons, one medial giant axon MGA, and two lateral giant axons LGAs, on the mid-dorsal side of the ventral nerve cord. The MGA is 0.07 mm in diameter and transmits in an anterior-posterior direction at a rate of 32.2 m per second. The LGAs are slightly wider at 0.05 mm in diameter and transmit in a posterior-anterior direction at 12.6 m per second. The two LGAs are connected at regular intervals along the body and are therefore considered one giant axon. Topic: Peripheral nervous system. 8 to 10 nerves arise from the cerebral ganglia to supply the prostomium, buccal chamber and pharynx. Three pairs of nerves arise from the subpharyngeal ganglia to supply the second, third and fourth segment. Three pairs of nerves extend from each segmental ganglion to supply various structures of the segment. Sympathetic nervous system The sympathetic nervous system consists of nerve plexuses in the epidermis and alimentary canal. A plexus is a web of nerve cells connected together in a two-dimensional grid. The nerves that run along the body wall pass between the outer circular and inner longitudinal muscle layers of the wall. They give off branches that form the intermuscular plexus and the subepidermal plexus. These nerves connect with the circumpharyngeal connective. Topic. Movement On the surface, crawling speed varies both within and among individuals. Earthworms crawl faster primarily by taking longer strides and a greater frequency of strides. Larger lumbricus terrestris worms crawl at a greater absolute speed than smaller worms. They achieve this by taking slightly longer strides but with slightly lower stride frequencies, touching an earthworm, which causes a pressure response as well as often a response to the dehydrating quality of the salt on human skin toxic to earthworms stimulates the subepidermal nerve plexus which connects to the intermuscular plexus and causes the longitudinal muscles to contact thereby the writhing movements when we pick up an earthworm this behavior is a reflex and does not require the cns it occurs even if the nerve cord is removed each segment of the earthworm has its own nerve plexus. The plexus of one segment is not connected directly to that of adjacent segments. The nerve cord is required to connect the nervous systems of the segments. The giant axons carry the fastest signals along the nerve cord. These are emergency signals that initiate reflex escape behaviors. The larger dorsal giant axon conducts signals the fastest, from the rear to the front of the animal. If the rear of the worm is touched, a signal is rapidly sent forwards causing the longitudinal muscles in each segment to contract. This causes the worm to shorten very quickly as an attempt to escape from a predator or other potential threat. The two medial giant axons connect with each other and send signals from the front to the rear. Stimulation of these causes the earthworm to very quickly retreat, perhaps contracting into its burrow to escape a bird. The presence of a nervous system is essential for an animal to be able to experience nociception or pain. However, other physiological capacities are also required such as opioid sensitivity and central modulation of responses by analgesics. Encephalin and alpha-endorphin-like substances have been found in earthworms. Injections of naloxone an opioid antagonist, inhibit the escape responses of earthworms. This indicates that opioid substances play a role in sensory modulation, similar to that found in many vertebrates. Topic. 
Topic: Photosensitivity. Earthworms do not have eyes, although some worms do. However, they do have specialized photosensitive cells called light cells of Hess. These photoreceptor cells have a central intracellular cavity phaosome, filled with microvilli. As well as the microvilli, there are several sensory cilia in the phaosome which are structurally independent of the microvilli. The photoreceptors are distributed in most parts of the epidermis but are more concentrated on the back and sides of the worm. A relatively small number occur on the ventral surface of the first segment. They are most numerous in the prostomium and reduce in density in the first three segments, they are very few in number past the third segment. Topic. Digestive system The gut of the earthworm is a straight tube which extends from the worm's mouth to its anus. It is differentiated into a buccal cavity, generally running through the first one or two segments of the earthworm, pharynx running generally about four segments in length, esophagus, crop, gizzard usually, and intestine food enters in the mouth. The pharynx acts as a suction pump, its muscular walls draw in food. In the pharynx, the pharyngeal glands secrete mucus. Food moves into the esophagus, where calcium from the blood and ingested from previous meals is pumped in to maintain proper blood calcium levels in the blood and food pH. From there the food passes into the crop and gizzard. In the gizzard, strong muscular contractions grind the food with the help of mineral particles ingested along with the food. Once through the gizzard, food continues through the intestine for digestion. The intestine secretes pepsin to digest proteins, amylase to digest polysaccharides, cellulase to digest cellulose, and lipase to digest fats. Earthworms use, in addition to the digestive proteins, a class of surface active compounds called drillodefensins, which help digest plant material. Instead of being coiled like a mammalian intestine, an earthworm's intestine increases surface area to increase nutrient absorption by having many folds running along its length. The intestine has its own pair of muscle layers like the body, but in reverse order an inner circular layer within an outer longitudinal layer. Topic. Circulatory system The earthworm has a dual circulatory system in which both the colomic fluid and a closed circulatory system carry the food, waste, and respiratory gases. The closed circulatory system has five main blood vessels, the dorsal top vessel, which runs above the digestive tract, the ventral bottom vessel, which runs below the digestive tract, the subneural vessel, which runs below the ventral nerve cord, and two lateral vessels on either side of the nerve cord. The dorsal vessel moves the blood forward, while the other four longitudinal vessels carry the blood rearward. In segments 7 through 11, a pair of aortic arches rings the coelom and acts as hearts, pumping the blood to the ventral vessel that acts as the aorta. The blood consists of amoeboid cells and hemoglobin dissolved in the plasma. The second circulatory system derives from the cells of the digestive system that line the coelom. As the digestive cells become full, they release non-living cells of fat into the fluid-filled coelom, where they float freely but can pass through the walls separating each segment, moving food to other parts and assist in wound healing. Excretory system The excretory system contains a pair of nephridia in every segment, except for the first three and the last ones. The three types of nephridia are, integumentary, septal, and pharyngeal. The integumentary nephridia lie attached to the inner side of the body wall in all segments except the first two. 
The septal nephridia are attached to both sides of the septa behind the 15th segment. The pharyngeal nephridia are attached to 4th, 5th and 6th segments. The waste in the coelom fluid from a forward segment is drawn in by the beating of cilia of the nephrostome. From there it is carried through the septum wall via a tube which forms a series of loops entwined by blood capillaries that also transfer waste into the tubule of the nephrostome. The excretory wastes are then finally discharged through a pore on the worm's side. Topic. Respiration Earthworms have no special respiratory organs. Gases are exchanged through the moist skin and capillaries, where the oxygen is picked up by the hemoglobin dissolved in the blood plasma and carbon dioxide is released. Water, as well as salts, can also be moved through the skin by active transport. Topic. Life and physiology At birth, earthworms emerge small but fully formed, only lacking their sex structures which develop in about 60 to 90 days. They attain full size in about one year. Scientists predict that the average lifespan under field conditions is 4 to 8 years, while most garden varieties live only 1 to 2 years. Topic. Reproduction Several common earthworm species are mostly parthenogenetic, meaning that growth and development of embryos happens without fertilization. Among lumbricid earthworms, parthenogenesis arose from sexual relatives many times. Parthenogenesis in some Aparectidae trapezoides lineages arose 6.4 to 1.1 million years ago from sexual ancestors. Mating occurs on the surface, most often at night. Earthworms are hermaphrodites, that is, they have both male and female sexual organs. The sexual organs are located in segments 9 to 15. Earthworms have one or two pairs of testes contained within sacs. The two or four pairs of seminal vesicles produce, store and release the sperm via the male pores. Ovaries and oviducts in segment 13 release eggs via female pores on segment 14, while sperm is expelled from segment 15. One or more pairs of spermatheca are present in segments 9 and 10, depending on the species, which are internal sacs that receive and store sperm from the other worm during copulation. As a result, segment 15 of one worm exudes sperm into segments 9 and 10 with its storage vesicles of its mate. Some species use external spermatophores for sperm transfer. In Hormogaster samnitica and Hormogaster elisei transcriptome DNA libraries were sequenced and two sex pheromones, attractin and temptin, were detected in all tissue samples of both species. Sex pheromones are probably important in earthworms because they live in an environment where chemical signaling may play a crucial role in attracting a partner and in facilitating outcrossing. Outcrossing would provide the benefit of masking the expression of deleterious recessive mutations in progeny. Also see complementation. Copulation and reproduction are separate processes in earthworms. The mating pair overlap front ends ventrally and each exchanges sperm with the other. The clitellum becomes very reddish to pinkish in color. Some time after copulation, long after the worms have separated, the clitellum behind the spermatheca secretes material which forms a ring around the worm. The worm then backs out of the ring, and as it does so, it injects its own eggs and the other worm's sperm into it. As the worm slips out of the ring, the ends of the cocoon seal to form a vaguely onion-shaped incubator, cocoon, in which the embryonic worms develop. Topic. 
Locomotion Earthworms travel underground by the means of waves of muscular contractions which alternately shorten and lengthen the body peristalsis. The shortened part is anchored to the surrounding soil by tiny claw-like bristles setae, set along its segmented length. In all the body segments except the first, last and clitellum, there is a ring of S-shaped setae embedded in the epidermal pit of each segment perichotine. The whole burrowing process is aided by the secretion of lubricating mucus. Worms can make gurgling noises underground when disturbed as a result of their movement through their lubricated tunnels. Earthworms move through soil by expanding crevices with force. When forces are measured according to body weight, hatchlings can push 500 times their own body weight, whereas large adults can push only 10 times their own body weight. Topic. Regeneration Earthworms have the ability to regenerate lost segments, but this ability varies between species and depends on the extent of the damage. Stevenson 1930, devoted a chapter of his monograph to this topic, while G. E. Gates spent 20 years studying regeneration in a variety of species, but, because little interest was shown, Gates 1972, only published a few of his findings that, nevertheless, show it is theoretically possible to grow two whole worms from a bisected specimen in certain species. Gates's reports included Icenia fetida, Savigny, 1826, with head regeneration, in an anterior direction, possible at each intersegmental level back to and including 23 24, while tails were regenerated at any levels behind 20 21, i.e., two worms may grow from one. Lumbricus terrestris Linnaeus, 1758 replacing anterior segments from as far back as 13-14 and 16-17 but tail regeneration was never found. Perionics excavatus perier, 1872 readily regenerated lost parts of the body, in an anterior direction from as far back as 1718, and in a posterior direction as far forward as 2021. Lampito Marishi Kinberg, 1867 with regeneration in anterior direction at all levels back to 25-26 and tail regeneration from 30-31, head regeneration was sometimes believed to be caused by internal amputation resulting from sarcophaga sp. Larval infestation Creodrylus lecume Hofmeister, 1845 also has prodigious regenerative capacity with, head regeneration from as far back as 4041, an unidentified Tasmanian earthworm shown growing a replacement head has been reported. Topic. Taxonomy and distribution Within the world of taxonomy, the stable classical system of Michelson 1900 and Stevenson 1930 was gradually eroded by the controversy over how to classify earthworms, such that Fender and McKee Fender 1990 went so far as to say, "...the family-level classification of the megascolicid earthworms is in chaos." Over the years, many scientists developed their own classification systems for earthworms, which led to confusion, and these systems have been and still continue to be revised and updated. The classification system used here, developed by Blakemore 2000, is a modern reversion to the classical system that is historically proven and widely accepted. Categorization of a megadryal earthworm into one of its taxonomic families under suborders Lumbricina and Manilagastrida is based on such features as the makeup of the clitellum, the location and disposition of the sex features, pores, prostatic glands, etc., number of gizzards and body shape. 
Currently, over 6,000 species of terrestrial earthworms are named, as provided in a species name database, but the number of synonyms is unknown. The families, with their known distributions or origins Acanthodrilidae, Gondwanan or Pangaean, Hyloscolicidae, Pyrenees and Southeast USA, Almidae, Tropical Equatorial, South America, Africa, Indo Asia, Benamina, Ethiopian, Neotropical, a possible subfamily of Octochatidae. Creodrilidae, southwestern Palearctic, Europe, Middle East, Russia and Siberia to Pacific Coast, Japan, Buadrilus, mainly aquatic Diplocardina, Adi, Gondwanan or Laurasian. A subfamily of Acanthodrilidae Enchytraidae, cosmopolitan but uncommon in tropics, usually classed with microdryles Eudrilidae, tropical Africa south of the Sahara Exidae, neotropical, Central America and Caribbean Glossoscolicidae, neotropical, Central and South America, Caribbean Haplotaxidae, cosmopolitan distribution, usually classed with microdryals Hormogastridae, Mediterranean Kynodidae, Malagasian, Madagascar Lumbricity, Holarctic, North America, Europe, Middle East, Central Asia to Japan. Glutodrilidae, Louisiana, Southeast USA. Megascolicity, Pangaean. Microcatidae, terrestrial in Africa, especially South African grasslands. Manilagastridae, Oriental and Indian subregion. Ochneridrilidae, Neotropics, Africa, India Octochatidae, Australasian, Indian, Oriental, Ethiopian, Neotropical Octochathinae, Australasian, Indian, Oriental, subfamily if Benamina is accepted Sparganophilidae, Nearctic, Neotropical, North and Central America Tumacidae, Colombia, South America Topic. As an invasive species From a total of around 7,000 species, only about 150 species are widely distributed around the world. These are the peregrine or cosmopolitan earthworms. Topic. Ecology Earthworms are classified into three main ecophysiological categories, one, leaf litter or compost-dwelling worms that are nonburrowing, live at soil litter interface and eat decomposing organic matter, called epigeic, e.g. Icenia fetida, two, topsoil or subsoil-dwelling worms that feed, on soil, burrow and cast within soil, creating horizontal burrows in upper 10 to 30 cm of soil, called endogics and three, worms that construct permanent deep vertical burrows which they use to visit the surface to obtain plant material for food, such as leaves called anesic meaning reaching up, e.g. Lumbricus terrestris, earthworm populations depend on both physical and chemical properties of the soil, such as temperature, moisture, pH, salts, aeration, and texture, as well as available food, and the ability of the species to reproduce and disperse. One of the most important environmental factors is pH, but earthworms vary in their preferences. Most favor neutral to slightly acidic soils. Lumbricus terrestris is still present in a pH of 5.4 and Dendrobena octaedra at a pH of 4.3 and some megascolicidae are present in extremely acidic humic soils. Soil pH may also influence the numbers of worms that go into diapause. The more acidic the soil, the sooner worms go into diapause and the longer they remain in diapause at a pH of 6.4. 
Earthworms are preyed upon by many species of birds e.g. starlings, thrushes, gulls, crows, snakes, mammals e.g. bears, foxes, hedgehogs, pigs, moles and invertebrates e.g. ground beetles and other beetles, snails, slugs. Earthworms have many internal parasites, including protozoa, platyhelminths, and nematodes. They can be found in the worm's blood, seminal vesicles, coelom, or intestine, or in their cocoons. Nitrogenous fertilizers tend to create acidic conditions, which are fatal to the worms, and dead specimens are often found on the surface following the application of substances such as DDT, lime sulfur, and lead arsenate. In Australia, changes in farming practices such as the application of superphosphates on pastures and a switch from pastoral farming to arable farming had a devastating effect on populations of the giant Gippsland earthworm, leading to their classification as a protected species. Globally, certain earthworms populations have been devastated by deviation from organic production and the spraying of synthetic fertilizers and biocides with at least three species now listed as extinct but many more endangered, vermicomposting of all organic «wastes» and addition of this organic matter, preferably as a surface mulch, on a regular basis will provide earthworms with their food and nutrient requirements, and will create the optimum conditions of temperature and moisture that will naturally stimulate their activity. This earthworm activity aerates and mixes the soil, and is conducive to mineralization of nutrients and their uptake by vegetation. Certain species of earthworm come to the surface and graze on the higher concentrations of organic matter present there, mixing it with the mineral soil. Because a high level of organic matter mixing is associated with soil fertility, an abundance earthworms is generally considered beneficial by farmers and gardeners. As long ago as 1881 Charles Darwin wrote, It may be doubted whether there are many other animals which have played so important a part in the history of the world, as have these lowly organized creatures. Also, while, as the name suggests, the main habitat of earthworms is in soil, they are not restricted to this habitat. The brandling worm Icenia fetida lives in decaying plant matter and manure. Arctiostrotus vancouverensis from Vancouver Island and the Olympic Peninsula is generally found in decaying conifer logs. Aparectidae limicola, Sparganophilus spp., and several others are found in mud in streams. Some species are arboreal, some aquatic and some urohaline salt water tolerant and littoral living on the seashore, e.g. Pontodrylus littoralis. Even in the soil species, special habitats, such as soils derived from serpentine, have an earthworm fauna of their own. Topic environmental impacts The major benefits of earthworm activities to soil fertility for agriculture can be summarized as, biological, in many soils, earthworms play a major role in the conversion of large pieces of organic matter into rich humus, thus improving soil fertility. This is achieved by the worm's actions of pulling below the surface deposited organic matter such as leaf fall or manure, either for food or to plug its burrow. Once in the burrow, the worm will shred the leaf and partially digest it and mingle it with the earth. Worm casts see bottom right, can contain 40% more humus than the top 9 inches 23 centimeters of soil in which the worm is living. Chemical, in addition to dead organic matter, the earthworm also ingests any other soil particles that are small enough, including sand grains up to 1 20th of an inch 1 millimeters, into its gizzard, wherein those minute fragments of grit grind everything into a fine paste which is then digested in the intestine. When the worm excretes this in the form of casts, deposited on the surface or deeper in the soil, minerals and plant nutrients are changed to an accessible form for plants to use. 
Investigations in the United States show that fresh earthworm casts are five times richer in available nitrogen, seven times richer in available phosphates, and eleven times richer in available potassium than the surrounding upper six inches of soil. In conditions where humus is plentiful, the weight of casts produced may be greater than 4.5 kg per worm per year. Physical, the earthworm's burrowing creates a multitude of channels through the soil and is of great value in maintaining the soil structure, enabling processes of aeration and drainage. Permaculture co-founder Bill Mollison points out that by sliding in their tunnels, earthworms act as an innumerable army of pistons pumping air in and out of the soils on a 24-hour cycle more rapidly at night. Thus, the earthworm not only creates passages for air and water to traverse the soil, but also modifies the vital organic component that makes a soil healthy see bioturbation. Earthworms promote the formation of nutrient-rich casts globules of soil, stable in soil mucus, that have high soil aggregation and soil fertility and quality. Earthworms accelerate nutrient cycling in the soil plant system through fragmentation and mixing of plant debris, physical grinding and chemical digestion. The earthworm's existence cannot be taken for granted. Dr. W. E. Shewell Cooper observed, tremendous numerical differences between adjacent gardens, and worm populations are affected by a host of environmental factors, many of which can be influenced by good management practices on the part of the gardener or farmer. Darwin estimated that arable land contains up to 53,000 worms per acre, 13 per square meters, but more recent research has produced figures suggesting that that even poor soil may support 250,000 acre, 62 per square meters, whilst rich fertile farmland may have up to 1,750,000 acre, 432 per square meters, meaning that the weight of earthworms beneath a farmer's soil could be greater than that of the livestock upon its surface. Richly organic topsoil populations of earthworms are much higher, averaging 500 worms M-2 and up to 400 gm-2 such that, for the 7 billion of us, each person alive today has support of 7 million earthworms, the ability to break down organic materials and excrete concentrated nutrients makes the earthworm a functional contributor in restoration projects. In response to ecosystem disturbances, some sites have utilized earthworms to prepare soil for the return of native flora. Research from the Station d'Ecologie Tropical de Lamto asserts that the earthworms positively influence the rate of macroaggregate formation, an important feature for soil structure. The stability of aggregates in response to water was also found to be improved when constructed by earthworms. Earthworms are not native to North America. Their abundance in most of it, introduced from sources such as transplanted soil, has had drastic environmental impacts. Many species, notably American robin, have adapted to feed on earthworms. Where earthworms are present, the fluffy duff layer of slowly decaying leaves is eliminated. This favors the growth of Eurasian species over natives. Earthworms have been named as a factor in the mesification and general decline of eastern forests. While earthworms have become ubiquitous in North America, some refuges absent of them remain. There is still motivation to prevent their spread in infested areas because new species can have even worse impacts. Economic impact Various species of worms are used in vermiculture, the practice of feeding organic waste to earthworms to decompose food waste. These are usually Icenia fetida or its close relative Icenia andre or the brandling worm, commonly known as the tiger worm or red wiggler. They are distinct from soil-dwelling earthworms. 
In the tropics, the African nightcrawler Eudrylus eugeniae and the Indian blue Perionyx excavatus are used. Earthworms are sold all over the world, the market is sizable. According to Doug Collicutt, in 1980, 370 million worms were exported from Canada, with a Canadian export value of $13 million and an American retail value of $54 million. Earthworms provide excellent protein for fish, fowl and pigs but were also used traditionally for human consumption. Noke is a culinary term used by the Maori of New Zealand, and refers to earthworms which are considered delicacies for their chiefs. See also Drylosphere, the part of the soil influenced by earthworm secretions and castings, the Formation of Vegetable Mold Through the Action of Worms, an 1881 book by Charles Darwin Soil Life Vermicompost Worm Charming <laughs>